So thanks everybody for letting us present to you. This is an amazing opportunity and we're so thrilled to be here. Um, yeah, I can't say enough. This is such a great project and hopefully we'll be able to take a part of it or we'll be able to participate in it, I should say. Hang on one sec. So just before we begin, um, we know there's probably going to be some shy people in the audience who don't want to identify themselves if there's any questions. So feel free to tweet to um, hashtag AskPWVan if you want to remain anonymous. Otherwise, I believe there's a mic in the audience somewhere that question anyone who feels like they can ask any time. Don't hesitate. You can interrupt us. So my name is Yana Foyt, and I'm the ringleader. Um, that really entitles me to kick these guys' butts when we're working on the project and making sure that they deliver everything that we've promised. Um, I'll be involved in the project right from day one till right to the end and the, when the, well, past the doors opening. Um, and I will also be the day-to-day -day contact for the project team, for you guys, and for the building committee. Um, My name is Jeff Stebar. I am uh, an architect. I lead the student life practice at Perkins and Will nationally and uh, all around North America. Um, I've done about uh, 40 student union projects, and over the last 15 years, I've worked on student union projects exclusively. So I live with kind of one foot in student life and one foot in architecture. I'm delighted to be here. Well, hi, I'm David Demecki. Uh, my specialty is sports and recreation, so I'll be the advocate for one of your three pillars, and that's the stadium project. Uh, I'll be working closely with, with Jeff on programming and planning. Uh, this is a picture of when I was um, zip lining in Costa Rica, and I think I was more nervous there than I was here in front of all of you. So, <laughs> But thanks for having us here. My name is David Dove. I am uh, the other David on the team, and I'm a graduate of Simon Fraser. I, I spent three and a half years here, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what you guys are going through. Um, I've been practicing architecture for a while. I uh, had the really good fortune of being able to do Blesson Hall, Saywell Hall, and also the renovation to Discovery 2 um, for the FIC just uh, completed that. Uh, for me, I'm, I, I love my job. I absolutely love architecture. Uh, what really it gets me excited is, is the, the opportunity to solve problems, and um, I think we've got one here, so thank you. Uh, one other person I want to introduce is Yahya. He's not going to be uh, part of our speaking group here today, but he's going to be following um, the Twitter uh, feed, so um, keep him busy. Thanks. So just to uh, let you know, we have an extended team that is 75 people in our office in downtown Vancouver. And we also consider you a part of our extended team. So we hope to work together to deliver a fantastic project. So we're going to be talking about three things. Um, we look at this as a journey with the, a beginning, a middle, and an end. The first step being the big idea. The second being the process of how we get there. And the third will be a new beginning for your new campus or your new student union building and stadium. Before, hello? Is that working? Let's try this one. Sorry. Sorry, we're not used to working with microphones. This is a, it's a little out of our a comfort zone to be this magnified. But anyway, we wanted to ask you guys a question. This is audience participation before we start. And the question is on the screen right over there. And that is, if the Build SF F SFU project only does one thing to be considered successful, it absolutely has to do what? I need a two-word answer. Okay, we got one minute. Okay, you. Study space, okay? Do you want to, here's the pen. You go ahead and write. Okay, I saw a hand back there. Promote community, Promote community. great. You, ma'am? Be sustainable. Be sustainable. I saw a hand back over here. There it was. Fix the stadium. Fantastic. Good answer so far. What else? If it, in other words, if the day we cut the ribbon on this project, if it doesn't do this one thing, it won't be considered successful. What would that be? Anything else? Anything about food service or... Uh, yes. Renewable energy. Renewable energy. Okay, great. Great. All right. Well, that helps us. That helps us understand a little bit more about what your priorities are. And we'll start every work session we do with you with questions like that, where it's meant to be much more interactive. Okay? Okay. Well, let's keep going. Uh, so we want to talk about a journey today. And we really look at this process as a journey and a journey working with all of you. And as we embark on this journey, a uh, couple other questions. Um, how many of you are kind of first or second year students here at SFU? 
Hand, hands up. Hands high. up. Really, like third and fourth. Third and fourth year. Okay, so an older. Oh, cup. more third and fourth year. Okay. How, how many of you are student athletes? Okay, I knew that over there because you got your SFU football. Yeah. Okay. How about how about commuters? How many commuter students? And then lastly, how many residential students? Okay, that's good. That helps. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. So let's move on to the big idea and the journey. So um, let's go to the next slide. All right. So just a little kind of background on student life, recreation, campus athletics. When your campus was built, you were very similar to many campuses in North America. You had a student life building, you had a recreation building, and you had an athletic building. And what we've experienced, you know, Jeff and I having done many of these buildings for the last 25 years, and I'll let you flip through this, is that there are many different models for thinking about how these three program spaces are brought together. One being campus athletics and recreation together and student life different. The other is student life and recreation combined into one building and campus athletics being a separate one. Our experience in the last few years is really to think about these buildings in a much different way, to kind of go beyond that traditional thinking and look at how we begin to integrate what we call six dimensions of wellness. And at these buildings are really, they're not just about physical wellness and physical well-being, but they also have to be, and they actually address many of the, the couple words that you put up there about, it's about emotional wellness, intellectual wellness, spiritual, social, environmental, but it's, it's all about this building being for an entire community, creating an exceptional campus life, student life experience. So, so our vision, and I think you actually really started the vision when you began to think about and plan the Build SFU project is about combining the three of these into one building. And what is really exciting about this project is you may be one of the few institutions in North America that actually is thinking about putting these together. And so it's an exciting time to be at the forefront of that integration of these three types of spaces. So you have a chance to really leave a legacy, not just for yourselves in the present, but for many who come, come after you here at Simon Fraser. So the challenge, and we've got a little quick video for you. We found this fascinating about what we call kind of the East Bank and the Left Bank, what happens in Convocation Mall on the day in the life of, of SFU, and what happens with the front door at Lauren Davies. And I think what we're going to talk about as we go through this process is there's a really sense of kind of dynamic, vibrant, active space, you know, but when you come here, it took me a while to find the front door. And a few years ago, working at Queens University, they told that the group of architects that could find the front door, find their way through the building, and get to the end actually got the project. And it actually took a couple hours for the architects to find their way through. So I think one of those challenges is, is really, how do we bring that vibrancy, that dynamic, that really kind of social interaction that you saw here in Convocation Mall, and how do we bring that across the bridge over to the kind of the West Bank, the Red Circle, and to begin to have that energy, that synergy, to really begin to tie those together. So some of the questions that we're going to be asking all of you on our workshops is, what are the positive attributes of this side of the campus and how can we bring them here to improve the Lauren Davies complex, the Terry Fox? We heard, I think, improving the field or the stadium was one, one in the back. I see the head nodding, so. Um, <clears throat> so how do we really think about not just this is your site, but this is your site, but really the entire campus as your site and the campus as a student center? So what we're going to be exploring with you throughout this process is finding, as we say, a few smart moves. What are those few things that we can do as a community to really change the experience one has here at SFU? And in waiting in the green room, I, the, up on the wall, you had a comment about a student union has the opportunity to create an exceptional student life experience. And I think that's, that could be one of those few simple moves. So the question then becomes, how do we get there? What's our process? How do we get from, from where we are right now to a ribbon cutting later on with an incredibly successful building? And so we, we have developed a process over the years doing student unions. This process was developed by students and it's, it works for students. And it's based on, based on building consensus 
before we build the project. And that has three key steps. The first is to get meaningful stakeholder involvement. In other words, all of you meaningfully involved in the process from the first day. Okay, we facilitate that by doing work sessions here on campus, multi-day long, where we'll be set up here, working with you for full days at a time, for three and four days at a time, every two to three weeks. So we'll be doing most of the major decision-making work here with you on campus. The second is to, to, do, to create this benchmark statement. You can see highlighted there on the screen. This benchmark statement has got two critical components. One is the, is the list of goals and objectives that will make Build SFU successful. That's developed working with you, with all of you and all the stakeholders. You're gonna develop that list with our leadership helping you get there. The second is to identify the DNA of SFU. What makes SFU absolutely unique? Okay, what makes Build SFU absolutely unique? And once we identify those things, that will become part of that benchmark statement as well, okay? The last thing then is to use that benchmark statement as our uh, direction setter. It's our measuring stick, okay? It's the way we make decisions. It's the criteria against which we make decisions, okay? So that is what we call our forming a more perfect union process. Again, it developed by students and developed for students. The key things we've learned over the years about student unions, there's three char the characteristics that, that really successful ones always have right. Whoa, yikes, it's going crazy on me. Okay, the first of those is it has to be in the right location. It has to be in the right place on campus. It has to be connected. It has to be part of that, that um, I'm going to put this down before I do that again, okay? Um, uh, part of the traffic, uh, the activity of campus, it has to be at that nexus of campus where it has all that activity. The second is it has to have the right program, the right mix of spaces, the right mix of rec, athletics, lounge, food, student government, um, you know, student orgs, all of those programs, spaces, all that kind of has to be the right mix, the right proportion and the right location. The last is the most commonly missing element, and that is it has to have the right framework that holds it all together and makes it perceivable, makes it understandable, and makes it really fun to be in. So when you walk through it, you just kind of intuitively know how to get through it. You don't have to follow signs to go around corners. And is, uh, Let me guess, I bet you that you, right now the wayfinding through the building is kind of challenging, isn't it? If you come in and telling a visitor how to find your office, it's not easy, is it? Yeah, I'm guessing, because it wasn't too easy the first time I came. But, but we, that can be cleared up, and that can be fixed, okay? So that's the, the, the three key things we found. Now, our process is one that involves the students meaningly, meaningfully throughout the whole process, it, even to the point of working with us on developing schemes and concepts and, uh, and um, a very democratic process that involves uh, you, all of you, in making the uh, decisions. It isn't about us making decisions or one person on the team making decisions. The benchmark statement process we have allows all of you to do that. Um, it's transparent. Uh, it's one that is, is not done in uh, little hidden rooms in the back. Again, you will be invited to sessions. We'll have big town hall sessions like this that'll be open. We'll have smaller group meetings with smaller focus groups. It'll be a whole range of meetings. And um, it's engaging. We will work with you not only in focus group meetings, but with all the different social media things. Um, uh, an idea we, we use is to, to have you go out on campus and take pictures of your five favorite places on campus and send them to, our, to a Twitter site. So we can compile all that information with a little bit of description from you about why they're important. Then we can determine what these great spaces are and how to incorporate those into our project, okay? And then lastly, it is really fun. We have a blast working with the students. We just love it. It's why we get up in the morning. We love your enthusiasm, your optimism, uh, and, 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 and so the process is really a lot of fun. The, question, the key is to connect with you where you are, okay? We don't just set up a, a room and say, okay, all the students come talk to us. Okay, we, that doesn't work. We've learned that over the years. One time, um, uh, we've done uh, presentations at campuses where we've done 15, 16 presentations over a weekend you know, Saturday and Sunday, trying to get all the different students that were on campus on the weekends or, or alums or others that were back for special events. Uh, we've presented in football stadiums before to 30,000 students to get a referendum passed so they'd all vote for a, a student-centered project in Texas. Uh, here we, uh, we presented at a midnight uh, breakfast uh, during final exams. They had a midnight breakfast deal. So we were there with our architectural models and all these bleary-eyed students talking about, uh, you know, here's these different options. What do you guys think? 
And then lastly, uh, at Case Western Reserve University, we learned a really important lesson because if you can see that small photo, um, we learned that, that chicken wings and white architectural mass models don't necessarily work well together, okay? That's a no-no, okay? Okay. Um, the key is to create this new beginning, this project that is, uh, it's a groundbreaking project. And so the question is, when we get to the groundbreaking, and we're actually at right, the ribbon cutting, what should this building be? What should you as a student be celebrating when we're cutting that ribbon? So we want to show you a number of slides that kind of give you an impression of what, what could happen with your new center. Uh, we don't be, want to be so presumptuous as to say, this is where we think we need to go. Uh, this is your building. But one thing we do know is design matters. It matters to all of us, right? I mean, we all have the, the nice iPhone, the, the iPad. I mean, design matters to us. Uh, one of the things that we, th we believe in is that makes this campus unique is its setting in nature and, and the ability to connect the interior space and the exterior space and really enjoy the nature is, is particularly important for us. And so we're going to paint a picture here for you, okay, of ideas. We, we, we didn't draw anything or design anything because we thought they'd be presumptuous if we came in without talking to you first. And so we, but we've painted a picture with, with, with photographs, and we just want to see your opinion. So you can give us a thumbs up or thumbs down on, on the pictures if, that's, if you think that's something you'd like to have in, in, the, in the union or not. Next. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Uh, sustainability was mentioned. Um, this is big to us. Uh, Peter Busby, who founded our firm, is kind of like the David Suzuki of architecture. Um, we, we're really sincerely and, and truly uh, embedded and committed to sustainability, both environmental, social, and financial. This is, you know, you've only got so much money, we have to make that stretch. There are three components to sustainability, and we're into all of them. A new front door, obviously, uh, the student union needs a proper front door, as we were saying, you know, you, you spend a bit of time up here and you're not necessarily sure where you're going. With Blesson Hall, we were able to produce or introduce a new front door to the east end of the campus. Something needs to happen here on the west end. At Texas A&M here, this uh, project, you can see this black and white photo in the front uh, at the top corner was the entrance they had. It was very similar to some of the entrances on this campus where it was under kind of a bridge-like thing and it was kind of dark under there. And this is the same picture later on when the project was finished creating that big, bright, open entrance, branded with the Texas A&M seal, and a great plaza out front to have student activities on. So that's, that's a possibility. A sense of place is critical. Um, this has to be a space that reflects you. When you're in it, you need to see yourself in it. It, it needs to say something about the student body here. Uh, the idea of introducing, um, celebrating movement and, and making those places that connect um, both visually and physically, they need to be useful to you and interesting. The idea of transparency. You know, being, being able to walk into a building and just kind of intuitively know what's going on and sense this, the feeling of the pulse of the university, that's, that's key in a student union building. And gathering spaces where, where people can gather in large groups, small groups. We understand the connections of technology and power that are critical now for lounge spaces. These are the kind of things we think could be fantastic here in the new sub. Uh, creating warm and inviting spaces. I uh, wanted to mention that I, go for. as somebody who's always cold, <laughs> I think people are going <laughs> to appreciate the fact that kind of we all know that Burnaby Mountain can be kind of dreary in the winter and how fa fantastic would it be that you come to school and you go straight to the fireplace and you warm up and you have coffee with your friends and before you go to class, that would be such a great feature that we think would be interest or would be a great addition to the Build SFU. And, and taking the circulation spaces in the building that now are, are kind of dark and maybe not terribly inviting, just walking down these corridors. And this is the before picture, and that's the same space after a renovation project we did in New York, um, to show you that the ability that those spaces could be fantastic, they could be transformed and become places you actually want to be in. Food, there's nothing more important than food in a student union. Okay, if you're going to stay in a student union more than an hour, you got to have good food, right? Is that uh, right? Absolutely. I can see everybody going, uh-huh. Yeah, um, you know, the before and after picture, but it's about, it's about creating not just great food, but great places to be in near the food that have programs and other things in them, okay? 
And then the idea of play, connected to all this. You know, we, we know you guys are multitasking all the time. It's not about going to a room to play and then a room to, to eat. It's about all that happening at the same time in the same space. So that kind of design is critical. And then introducing fun into it. How do you do uh, group gaming and other things that are, that are really fun things to hang out with uh, in places? And how do you do it that, that creates a sense of uh, a connection to Simon Fraser? And it's all about uh, creating community. That's what we're here to do, right? That's what the whole goal of this process is, is to create community. And you can see spaces like this could be fantastic. Places where people would connect, do, and do whatever they want to do. That's what a community is about. One thing we didn't mention is that every one of these images that you've seen are buildings that the people on the stage have been involved in. So these aren't just uh, stock images. This is, this is our work. So I'm gonna quickly do my kind of one word exercise that we gave you in the beginning. But I want to talk about variety. <clears throat> As we begin to integrate spaces around wellness, and I talked about the six dimensions of wellness, one of the things that I've learned is that <clears throat> it's no longer a treadmill in a box. And that the idea is to really provide an amount of variety for fitness for everyone here on campus. And so that we have intimate spaces to work out and larger spaces to work in out. <clears throat> but it's also about wellness, to provide spaces for, for dance, aeroga, uh, uh, yoga, aerobics, martial arts, and so on. But <clears throat> as we look at wellness, it's not just spaces that accommodate 30 or 40 people in a class. You want to move on? But it's also finding those more intimate spaces. It's not just the intimate space that <clears throat> Yana talked about around a fireplace, but how do we provide spaces that are around well-being and wellness for everybody here, whether that's about meditation or about fitness and working out. <clears throat> it's also looking at lifestyle change and thinking about food and nutrition and, and, and a healthy lifestyle. But it's also about programming spaces that are multi-purpose and larger spaces so that we can address the needs of your intramural programs, your club programs, those, those aspects. Um, you know, I noticed going up uh, Gallardi Way where you have recreation, aquatics, swimming, that you begin to celebrate your programs, but then also to begin to look at how we're meeting the needs of students as they attend events, but those spaces that are for the student athlete, whether that be the indoor um, <clears throat> gym and arena space, but having those spaces be flexible and multi-purpose for a variety of activities. So it can be for a concert or, or a convocation or for that athletic event. There are also places to begin to celebrate <clears throat> your pride and, and pride in your history and tradition around intercollegiate athletics, intramurals, and club sports. So kind of the building becomes a living legacy about that, that history here. As we continue on into the programming phase, you want to, next slide. Sorry, I was reading the Twitter feed. Sorry. Oh, okay. But it's also about you know how do we display the the message of the building um, throughout, um, whether that's you know celebrating the activity of sports. For those of you who are student athletes, um, these are hinker spaces that would be important to you. What are the locker room spaces that build camaraderie you know, around teamwork, around you know, social lounge, locker space? How do we improve that experience for you? That's really my background and what I'm passionate about. But what are those spaces that help you in performance, strength and conditioning, sports medicine, physiotherapy? You know, how do we improve those spaces for you uh, and provide those spaces that are not just for you but for all of the students um, and sharing that space? The other is thinking about this, the stadium and the game day experience. Um, how can we improve the fan experience, the plaza experience, those spaces that you can enjoy on a daily basis when the sun is shining and have the view out to the landscape? But how do we begin to think about you know, a lower seating bowl, an upper tier, and really making Terry Fox Field, in a sense, a, a, an iconic space, a space that's really a campus quad. And so we kind of thought you have your academic quad, but how could this really be an athletic quad? And really begin to have a space that it's about an enhanced fan experience, student experience, and student athlete experience. You have a wonderful and beautiful setting, and I think that could be tremendously enhanced and then link it back to your other practice fields and play fields. So this could really be an anchor for student life, recreation, and campus athletics. So finally, just to take it back to the beginning, the vision for the Build SFU, finding the convergence between, uh, between the student's life, the campus athletics, and the recreation. We think those are the, the three, the big opportunity here is to create a community for all of SFU. 
Um, we do have some questions from Twitter, yay. <laughs> so the first one is, I thought the location hasn't been decided yet. How do we know that the sub will be where Lord Davies is sitting? Um, we actually don't know, but what we see is a vision where we can do something unique in this campus that hasn't been done before. And I think the, the, the opportunities here are so amazing to create an, a, a new community at SFU where um, the out-of-campus experience is, is, is shared by all students. Jeff, you might want to... Yeah, one of the ways that we, we would recommend that you make that decision of how, where the building goes is we determined, we developed that benchmark statement, remember I talked about with the goals and objectives and the brand identity and all of that, and we use those criteria to decide or evaluate different site options. So whichever site meets most of those goals and, and most, most of those objectives, that becomes the preferred site. So that, again, that benchmark statement is going to be the way we make decisions from the biggest decisions on the project, like where it goes, to the smallest decisions on the project. So the next question is, students having a high turnover, um, asking what students want and need now might, n might not be what the future students want and need. That's a great Thoughts question. That. Boy, it is. whoever, man, I'm impressed, okay? That is really <laughs> thinking ahead. I am really impressed. Because we're designing this building right now for a bunch of eighth graders, right? You know, because by the time it's designed and built, it's going to be three years or so. I mean, there's going to be, you're, you're, you got a bunch of young kids that are going to be using the building. So we have to think about flexibility. How do we adapt this building to, to needs in the future? Uh, we need to make it uh, very easily changeable so they can pro programs can be changed in and out if they, if they change in the future. But certain things always work. Daylight always works. Openness, transparency, natural materials, those things don't go out of style. Okay, and if we stay with that kind of basics and then make it flexible, we can, we can meet those changing needs. Student space has been a problem on the Bernabeep campus for a long time. What would you do that hasn't been tried? Wow. Build a student union building. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd start with what hasn't been tried is actually linking all these three together. That's so I think your, your big vision is something that folks haven't, haven't tried in the past. I think also around, and I'll just, Jeff, you can chime in as well, but I think around recreation and athletics, there, there are many ways to think about the building, the, the, the stairs in the building, the just the circulation in the building, and then your campus. What really hasn't been tried is actually thinking of your whole campus as a wellness center. The way you walk around your campus, the way you integrate through the landscape, the way you can walk up and down the stairs of this building, but I think you can actually think about your project in a, in a much more holistic and integrated way. I think you've started that by thinking about linking these, these three aspects of, of wellness. That is absolutely unique. That's very exciting. Yes, sir, up front. Uh, just one question, uh, basically. This is a marvelous concept, and a congratulations to all of you. However, is this done any, has it been completed, the concept ever worked out anywhere else? Uh, have you seen that, that Troyoka there uh, all together? Actually, no. I mean, the closest that I've personally come is the work that I did at Queen's University, at the Queen's Center, where we actually linked them. But at Queen's, the idea was a kind of crossroads that connected north and south and east and west. And each of the components had their own quadrant, so that you had student life in one quadrant, athletics and rec in another, academics in a fourth, and then the old Memorial Union building as the fourth quadrant. Here, I think you have the opportunity to actually have them much more layered on, on top, more integrated. So there it was circulation that integrated. I think here at, at SFU, you'd have the opportunity to actually mix and actually create greater synergies between the, the three, given the, the, the building we're in now, the Lauren Davies complex, the bridge, and you are truly kind of at the center of potentially of campus. You know, that, that, uh, the idea of bringing these together is what David and I have been talking about for years as a future of, of student life. Because these buildings need to become a mirror, a reflection of the rhythms of your day. And your day doesn't revolve around departmental organizations and, and different funding sources. It revolves around activities that you put together. And we see this being the future of that reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Time is your most valuable commodity. And I think this will really help reinforce the sense of community. Pound it out loud. Yes. So, um, when you were talking about being iconic, it really did get me thinking. Uh, I'm wondering if there are any parts uh, of the SFU campus that you think are still being used by the Fifteen seconds. 
we're coming up against a hard break here, so. I've got, I've got 10 seconds. Uh, <laughs> iconic architecture. Uh, this this con campus was designed and built in 18 months. Uh, it, uh, it has very strong, strong bones. Um, if you think about ruins, you think about the Acropolis or Stonehenge, these are things that, you know, after 500 years, 1,000 years, they look really cool. They're really cool to experience. This campus is that kind of a space already. Um, so I think there's great bones here. We just have to work within it. Mark's asking us to stop, so I wanted to honor his uh, okay. request. So thanks so Thank much you for your time. Thank you guys so much. We, really we appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you very much. So we're going to take about a quick 10 minute break, so first thanks to Perkins and Will for presenting. <laughs> uh, we're going to take about a 15 minute break. If you want to head to the thing